In Halor 8, we've also made a number of changes to some of our 3D tools and lighting tools, and I'd like to show some of those here. Uh, you might use the lighting tool to create textures and that sort of thing for, uh, for various uses, maybe for a 3D program or for, uh, for some kind of illustration or that sort of thing. Uh, and you might start out with something like a fractal noise, or you might use one of our newer um, newer tools like our... Well, we've recently updated our cellular tool, so I'll show that here. Uh, as you can see, that now works in more or less real time. Uh, there's a number of new parameters, cell size and grid size and that sort of thing. Uh, that can be can be used. There's also a new uh, drop-down menu that lets you choose uh, the rendering type. But I'll go ahead and use these default settings for now. And this is a this is a good way for making um, well cellular is uh, pretty much what it sounds like. So like you find cells on a, a a leaf or something like that or in a beehive. I'm gonna load up the lighting tool to show some of the new parameters there. Uh, the program, uh, the lighting tool does work pretty much as before. You would uh, add new layers and that sort of thing, adding new lights for each layer. You can move it around, see the preview in real time, that sort of thing. But there are some new parameters that we're going to look at right now. One of the big ones is the specular highlighting. That gives a sort of a glossy shininess to uh, to your lighting effect. And um, there also a new parameter is the, uh, the ability to change uh, the, the multiply effect here this will take the original that original image say it was a, a photograph or something and that'll like use a, a multiply mode to blend that back in with the original and that's a good way of um, keeping the original colors of, of the original image or texture or by or it'll, in the case of a black and white image like this it'll give sort of a uh, an occlusion effect what do they call that uh, uh, sh uh, lighting occlusion type of effect or a shadow occlusion uh, type of look to to your image. Um, changing the texture height will have a, a dramatic effect on that specular. By the way, um, if your height's too high, all the all the little specks will be on top uh, because these are actually really tall bumps on here, and they're they're all pointing upwards. But if you change this height, it'll um it'll bring that lighting. Uh, a little more naturally and towards the, the light um, that you have there. Also changing the light distance will have a, a dramatic effect there. Um, changing the lighting color now will give us a, a little different look than it did before. Our specular now uses a, um, a new algorithm also and our lighting has a new algorithm there that uh, looks slightly different but it, it's, uh, it's a good look. It's a little more flexible. Uh, lighting and intensity and distance are there as they as they've always been as uh, the ability to add new Lights I'll add a second light with a different color as you can see we're getting a, a lot more realistic looking because of that specular uh, Than we previously were able to achieve and uh, I think that'll be it for that there are some other new uh, 3d features as well let me go ahead and merge these layers. When you add a light, that adds a new layer. And uh, one good thing about that is you can go in later and change the, the layer, uh, the intensities on each individual layer. So you can do that in, in uh, as of after you finish with that lighting tool. But I'll go ahead and merge those for now. Another thing we can do, let me get rid of this and create a just a fractal noise. And that'll be sufficient. Um, Normally we go into the uh, 3D tool, the 3D designer, and, and be able to create a height map out of that. But one new feature in Haller 8 is the ability to animate this now on the timeline. So let me go to go create an animation and go to the timeline. The timeline has been updated since version uh, 7.2 to have uh, new capabilities and a new look and uh, basically new new capabilities and um, it'd be easier to use. So say I go into this uh, transform 3D designer it brings up the 3D designer panel I just go ahead and find the 
parameters I want for that and I'll just uh, keep it say right about there hit OK now you can see this 3 designer is now in our timeline we can interact with it we can set keyframes for it let me set a keyframe at the beginning one over here I'll go ahead and move this I'll zoom in that kind of thing oh let's see you can you can move uh, you can translate the image the camera rather you can change the heading pitch and bank so I'll go ahead and um, set a keyframe here and one at the end so now I can scrub through my animation you couldn't do that before 7.2 you can scrub through your animation to see what your preview is going to look like before you render it. A new thing you can do in Howler 8 is also move these keyframes once they've been created. So I'll go ahead and hit apply. And I'll go ahead and render our render all that stuff we just set up. And we have a 3D animation. Uh, now when you when we rendered that, you can see it kind of backed up. A little bit at the beginning and then it went into that really what I wanted was more of a linear effect so I'll turn off this uh, cubic interpolation or rather this uh, catmull ROM interpolation and uh, now you can see that we have linear keyframes well let me let me start with a different filter and show that a little bit better say we uh, set a keyframe there set one here as you can see, these, uh, these, these the interpolation is now linear instead of being cubic like it was there, where it has a smooth in and out point. And that is just a few new features in in Howler 8.